Welcome to another special edition of Wars Car Crazy. Once again, we're back in Las Vegas, Nevada for the annual Super Bowl of automotive trade shows. This is the SEMA Show. I mean, this is just the place to be. And I mean, you look out and you just, it's just a candy store here. As always, we're bringing you all the excitement and hanging out with some of the most influential car guys on the planet. I right. built six of them and everybody says to me, why did you sell those cars for $4,000 a piece? And just wait until you see the rides that will be rolling across our SEMA television car crazy stage. We're talking about a Pontiac GTO. What inspired you to actually take it out on the track? Build me an engine so I could get out of my own oh way. My. So get ready. We're going car crazy at the SEMA show. You got the dynamic four here yeah. and the dynamic yeah. four will be yeah. here next year and the next year after that. We traveled the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guys to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. Car it's time to get to the heart of the car guy. This is Car Crazy. Hi everybody, welcome to another very special edition of Mars Car Crazy. Debbie Dave from Las Vegas with the Specialty Equipment Market Association. We call it the Siemens Show, where more than 100,000 car guys come from over 50 countries to walk about 2 million square feet to see the coolest stuff with the planet that makes our cars look better, go faster. It's a hoot, I mean, it's a half day. It is the greatest week of the year for car guys that are in the business side for the next four days. And we're gonna literally cram all this into two 30 minute TV shows, but we're ready. The question is, are you ready? If so, then buckle your seatbelts. The action starts right now. It is my special privilege, I mean special privilege, to have these four guys on the stage all at once. Let's go back 30 years ago, what the show was like 30 years ago, right? Well, the show was only in one hall, what's now called the C1 Hall. We had about 595 booths. I think we had 3,500 attendees. And compared to this Isn't year, we'll probably something? have 130,000 attendees, uh, almost 10,000 booths. Translates to about 2,100 exhibiting companies. 2,100 manufacturers here, and man. maybe oh, very man. 500 new first-time exhibiting really? companies. We've got 1,500 cars on display 1500. this year. And we always talk about it's the biggest car show in the world, but it's also the biggest group of people that make these things happen. In yeah. The every year, SEMA reminds us of the enormity of the car hobby. I mean, it's huge. And every year, we surround ourselves with some of the great cars for you to enjoy on stage, like the first Corvette I recall ever to make it into the final eight at the Autorama Show in Detroit, customized by Johnny Martin of Alamosa, Colorado. It's not often when a Corvette makes it to the final eight for the Riddler Award. <laughs> you put so much work into this car. This is a 62 Corvette. Tell us some of the great features on this car, some that you're particularly proud of. Uh, the, probably the side emblems, you yeah. know, that we that we made it instead in the coves. Mm -hmm, uh, that's mm -hmm. probably one of the coolest things. And then it's matched on the engine cover. Yeah. Um, the From the doors back, pretty much we made. I mean, they're widened and lengthened. And really? but the headlights is interesting. The, the headlights is another deal. Um, the headlight rings and stuff we made so we didn't have to have all the screws. And uh -huh, then the, uh -huh, the front. Uh -huh bumpers used to run through the center of the grills, so we made those all one deal and turned the grill upside down. What's well, a stunning car. Thank it you really very much. Is. So much more than a trade show. SEMA is an incredible car show with over 1,500 stunning cars on display featuring the hottest new trends and products on the market. And the retailers we rely on to deliver the goods are here in force. That's the other side of the story. Hanging out with Kevin Freeland, the Chief Operating Officer for Advanced Auto Stores, but you're not on the stage because of Advanced Auto Stores. You're on here because you're a car guy. Well, I, uh, my first car was a 65 Mustang, and it was a, uh, a 289 two-barrel. No, not uh, a bad car to start with. Put a four-barrel carburetor <laughs> and uh, manifold on it, and uh, I was having trouble. Turned it over to my dad, and, uh, and he says, well, it's bound to be faster. He said, look at all the parts you've got left over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where it all began, but yeah, uh, it was yeah. it, it became a lifelong addiction. So you have a company that's full of cars guys that have great passion. The, actually, our motto is service is our best part. Yeah. And so it's it's the personal service that we give uh, to the DIYers that come in and to the commercial garages. And you're awesome, man. Kevin right. Freeland, everybody. Back with more of our crazy friends in just a minute. You know, I always wanted to race him, see? 
He, he claims he has the fastest car in the valley, and I claim I have the fastest yeah. car. <laughs> but either, either I was torn down or he was torn down. We never got the race. at the same time. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. <laughs> when we come back, we'll fill our stage with legends. There's no way on earth you could have possibly known what you said. Never, never could I have dreamed. <laughs> And then we'll get the scoop from Speed's famous crew chief commentator, Ray Everham. We can't carry a lot of data acquisition equipment on a, on a stock car. It has to, it's basically the old style. Stopwatch and driver comments is how you fix that thing. Don't you dare go away. Welcome back to Boulevard's Car Crazy. Unless you're part of the industry, you can't get into the SEMA show because it's trade only. And that's why we're here to bring it to you. I mean, this is just the place to be. And if you look out and you just, it's just a candy store here. If somebody wants to meet the who's who at SEMA, yeah. come hang out at the SEMA TV booth with Barry McGuire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, it's literally, I mean, you walk around, it's like there's, you know, I mean, the icons of the industry. You name the legendary car hobby icon, and you're likely to find them here somewhere and sometime during the show right here on our Car Crazy stage. The one and only Carol Shelby, everybody. I often say this. I think it's true. <laughs> you're the longest surviving heart transplant patient? No, I don't think that I'm the longest surviving heart, but I'm the longest surviving. I have a heart in my son's kidney. Yes. A double, yes. double yes, that's transplant what it is. That's what it is. I knew there was. And I, I knew he had a yeah. world record in the medical field. And still having so much fun. And we're building a lot of interesting cars you here are. in Las Vegas. You are. You're still doing it. It's the total value of the Cobras now. Woo. My gracious. One of the Daytona Coupes that won the world championship just sold for over $15 million. Is that right? One car. Yes. One and car. I built six of them, and everybody says to me, why did you sell those cars for $4,000 a piece? I said, last year's race car was worthless. That's right. That's right. Back then. That's right. And I said, beside yeah, that, I needed the $4,000. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, I don't know if I've ever told you. Do you know you inspired Car Crazy? We were sitting one night. You're telling me one of your stories, another one of your stories, you know. For some reason, that night, I said to myself, we ought to do a TV show and have those come to life. And now, 15 years later, we're the longest running show on the yeah. Speed Channel. So thank you, I Carol. I never realized that. You that. did that. that, that you did that. <laughs> Isn't he amazing? After all these years, Carol's so sharp and so passionate and still in the game. And speaking of tenure, how about the Pep Boys celebrating their 90th anniversary? 90 years of Pep Boys. Yeah, Manny Moe and wow. Jack started the company wow. 90 years yeah, ago. Yeah, there really year. was a Manny Moe and Jack. There, there really was a man. Three Army buddies started in WW1. You guys are rocking. You're yeah, really we're doing having lots fun. of things for car guys. We opened our 11th speed shop. Did you? Uh, yeah, actually here in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago. So 10 of them have gone through grand openings. We got, uh, I think, another 10 on the docket for uh, the next year and a half or so. Cool place for car guys. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I walk into these speed shops you're mm -hmm. creating now, and I'm back to being 16 years old all over again. What you're taking the car hobby today and where it's going and I think it's why coming is it back. going so fast? America is still in love with their car. Car guys and car girls are going to be customizing cars forever. And speaking of custom creations, our next showcase car began its journey to SEMA as a hidden treasure. I never know this was a barn find. This thing. It's, it's just a jewel. I mean, it's one of the prettiest Firebirds ever said. This is a 69 Firebird, yes, right? Yes, sir. Right? Tell us a story on this car. Stop. Well, actually, when the car came in, it had mice nests and stuff inside of it. It had, <laughs> you, know, you know, cobwebs and just, you know, who knows what kind of varmints were living in this car over yeah. the years. So explain what you did to her. Well, basically, you wanted something that was kind of, you know, had modernized suspension. We actually took a, a, the, the Pontiac 400 motor and stuff for the car and actually built it up. So, you know, it's pushing over 560 plus horsepower yeah. right now yeah. on pump gas. Yeah and put a five-speed overdrive in it so he could actually get out on the interstate and drive it. There's not a lot of these cars around. These cars, they don't get enough attention like, like the Camaros do, and, and when you get one of these that's nice, it's kind of fun to kind of bring them to that level of, of what we like to see yeah, today. That's something. Barn finds are still out there. They're yeah. still out there. You got to keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, the vice president of Chevy Motorsports gives us a little trackside history lesson. They battled Porsche and BMW and Ferrari. And then the mother of two proves once again that not all car guys are guys. I always oh wanted goodness. one, found Crazy. one up the street for $300. Stay with us. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy here at the SEMA Show with the coolest cars, the coolest of cool new products, the legends who have made the car hobby what it is today, as well as the icons of motorsports who have gripped our attention. Welcome back to our Car Crazy stage, talking NASCAR here. 
David Reagan, great to have you back on the stage. Yeah, it's always fun to be here, here at the SEMA show. And crew chiefs, I mean, you don't get any better. You're a legend, man. Ray Everham, the man himself. So you've had a pretty good season. You had won a race in July. Yeah, we won the Coke Zero 400 in Daytona, and that, that was a big win for our team. That's right in the middle part of the season. This is a very long, tough season. Well, you're running with a pretty good team there. Yeah, yeah, Roush Fenway Roush Racing. Fenway. Uh, we've got uh, two Fords uh, in the in the championship battle. Hopefully, we can pull off a few more wins. Hey, let's talk about crewing for a little bit because uh, you had this golden relationship <laughs> with Jeff Gordon. And then, you know, you guys parted company. The value of a crew chief was not proven before that. It certainly was <laughs> in, in that situation. Well, I appreciate you saying that. David could tell you, you know, and speak to that, how important that trust and honesty and respect that has to be between a crew chief and a driver, yeah. because you, we can't carry a lot of data acquisition equipment on a, on a stock car. Yeah. It has yeah. to, it's basically the old style. Stopwatch and driver comments is how you fix that thing. So how that communication is really important. It really is. And you watch that, of course, as an analyst on uh, Speed Channel, you're watching these races, do you ever look at that and say, oh, they should have tweaked this or should have tweaked that? All the time. And that's it's a lot, a lot more fun, right? <laughs> From cool cars and car guys to mass merchandisers, are we having an impact on the retail market or what? Normally speaking, food stores don't have a lot of car guy products, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and Meyer, we got a lot of them. Man, you guys have a section. Great We've really made up. A big effort at going after those brands that you see the folks running around here at SEMA, you know, <laughs> want to put on their cars and want to use yeah. for their cars. For me, you know, I've got friends that are car guys, yeah. and I call them up for advice all the time, and they talk about our stores, and I just want to keep them happy because they put so much time. You look at the stuff that you see at SEMA, <laughs> and it's like, wow. wow. And yeah. if I can give that to my friends and yeah. the rest of the shoppers, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. When you're at SEMA, you see incredible cars in every direction, like this spectacular 66 GTO owned by a totally car-crazy family. This car behind us is, 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 is part of the family. Yeah. We're talking about a Pontiac GTO, 66 yes. vintage. Yes. yes, So, Beautiful So you got this car. car, it was kind of broke. We got it when he, Mike was eight months old. I oh always wanted goodness. one, found really? one up the street for sale for $300. Had a blown engine. We got it. My husband fixed the engine and went shopping in it. Brought their younger brother home in a car seat in it. Took it to the racetrack. What inspired you to actually take it out on the track? And you had this competition part of you before that? Yeah. And something you always wanted to do? Yeah. I told him, build me an engine so I could get out of my own oh way. Oh, my goodness so sakes. He did. You kept this car all these years. Yeah. All I these just, years. Couldn't part with it. Could never. People would ask, how much do you want for the car? Yeah. So I'd say, 100000 Yeah. And they'd say, you're nuts. Just, no, yeah. don't want to sell yeah. it. That's basically saying, it's not for sale. No. All right, no. Well, I think the Bill family deserves honors as the car craziest <laughs> family of the year for, for the 2011 Stephen Show. We'll be back with more of our car crazy friends right after this break. Coming up next, we have Mr. Automotive News himself, Keith Crane, and the legendary Jack Rouse joining us on our Car Crazy stage. He is a man who loves to squeeze that last horsepower out of him. Yeah. Head. And then get ready for one of our Car Crazy showcase cars that brings a classy Cadillac to a new low. This is a 66 Cad yes. uh, DeVille convertible. I mean, this car is low. Yeah. You got to see this. Welcome back to SEMA Television on our Car Crazy stage, where Chevrolet is celebrating its 100th anniversary and so much more. Motorsports is live and well. We're involved in so many race series, and we, we announced we're going to go back into IndyCar in 2012. Just won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. We won the 24 Hours of Le Mans for the seventh time. We had a, we had a great team over there. They battled Porsche and BMW and Ferrari. So uh, we love racing, and uh, uh, performance is alive and well at Chevy. You know, it doesn't matter which hall you're in, or even what aisle for that matter, SEMA is 2 million square feet of hyperactivity. Keith Crane, the one and only Keith Crane, arguably the most powerful man in Detroit. Did you, did these CEOs no, come I and go. I see you. Keith Crane is Keith, a, king, a kingmaker. He's the kingmaker, right? <laughs> Jack Roush, and we haven't had you on for a couple of years, and you kind of lost an eye since we had you on stage yeah, last Yeah, I, I had another airplane wreck. I've had, <laughs> I've had my last airplane wreck now. Help us understand your viewpoint of where, where we're going as an industry today. The Detroit companies, having been bankrupt, Chrysler and GM, I think they've recovered, mm -hmm. and they are slowly winning their way back. The poor Japanese have problems, not even of their own doing, the car companies, with the yen is now so strong, it makes it almost yeah. impossible for them to compete bringing cars into the United yeah. States. Yeah, so, boy, has that changed. Our job is just 
to write all about it. But right now, they're cafe standards that are almost unbelievable. Something like 55 miles a gallon in it yeah. for years. I mean, they keep passing them. That sounds good. There's going to be a huge cost to, if they if those standards stay stay if they stand. It's, it's going to be a huge cost to the consumer. Well, really that's why you're that's, seeing that's such not, a popularity in hybrid. We continually have to remind ourselves that this is a trade show after all. Focus on creating and delivering car guy products to the car hobby. But it's also nice to remember why we all fell in love with cars to start with. And the Peterson Museum on the Miracle Mile in Los Angeles does that really well. It's 300,000 square feet, and presently we have two wonderful exhibits, major exhibits. One is supercars and the other one is scooters. When we do an exhibit, we try to give people a lot of different things, things they expect to see, but also things that they had no idea was even out there, and that they think, wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. What are, what are the coolest cars that you like? We have a GTO Ferrari, you know, that's 30 plus million dollars. A Testarossa, the 375 mm. Talk about the vault. There is this mystery room. This is really the really, really good stuff. Well, we call it the vault because it's such a secure area. It's got so many wonderful things, the kind of things that you would expect to see when you go to a vault. Yeah. We have our reserve collection down there Bugattis, Delahays, Delages, Duesenbergs, Packards, Stutzes. Yeah, it's amazing. And some pretty important hot it rods, is too. We have over 200,000 people a year come through the museum. Wow. We welcome them to 6060 Wilshire Boulevard yeah, yeah. in Los Angeles. <laughs> And our next Car Crazy Showcase car is Carlos Campbell's radically low purple caddy. Hanging out with Carlos Campbell from North Carolina. Baby, you come a long yeah, way to do this. A long way to do this, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it's amazing what cars will do for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely will. The Javi, just amazing. Yeah, I mean, I started all the way, man, from model cars to the Hot Wheels, and did now you, I'm here. Did so. you? This is a 66 CAD yes. uh, DeVille convertible. I mean, this car is low. Yeah, yeah, I actually wanted it lower, but it is as low as I can get it for now. Is that so, right? Yeah. Well, we still got it on yeah. stage. We did good. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. What was your inspiration for this car? Um, Man, just I just always have crazy ideas for cars, man. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, you know, it, it has to be purple. It, it, it just screamed out purple when I saw it. Cadillacs have really come into vogue. Yeah. And, and, and convertibles <laughs> get them low. I mean, they look like they're about 50 feet long. Because they really right? are in real life. No, no. It just keeps coming and coming and coming down the streets. Yeah. What's it like driving it down the street? It, it, like they say, it rides like a Cadillac. Nice, nice and easy. Nice and close. Yeah, easy. He is Carlos Campbell, Carlos. I love your passion. <laughs> Thanks, I really man. got a great heart. <laughs> Back with more of our car crazy friends right after this break. We all grew up together. Yeah. You got the dynamic four yeah. here, and the dynamic yeah. four will be yeah. here next year and the next year after that. We hope so. When we come back, we're actually going to show you how far one retailer is going to transform their stores into car guide destinations. Presuming you go with this car? Everywhere. Do you? <laughs> Everywhere. Don't you dare touch that remote. Welcome back to our Car Crazy stage for, um, I would say, easily the most meaningful uh, interview we've had here at Seymour. We'll have Joey Park with us, Army Specialist, uh, hit one of those mines going down the road in 2007 and uh, changed your life forever, yes, sir. to say the least. It really did. I, I've had to relearn to do a lot of things I naturally learned growing up. Well, we have Melanie Gideon on here, Operation Men, manages Operation Men at the UCLA Medical Center. How yeah. did the two of you, how did you learn about Operation Men and how the two of you start your relationship? I was down in San Antonio for the opening of the uh, Wounded Warrior Family Center and walked right up to him and his mom and he had his sunglasses on and his head was down and he was standing there with his arms crossed and I said, hey, by any chance, would you want to look into our program up at UCLA? We do reconstructive facial surgery of some of the best plastic surgeons in the country. Um, we would love to help you out. Flew them up to UCLA, and four surgeries later, he can close his mouth all the way, close his eyes when he sleeps. Wow. Um, he's a different person. Wow. Off camera, you're telling all the cards you've wrenched on. I mean, you, you know your cards. You've been doing it all your life. And, Absolutely. Uh, you are a car guy. Now, you, you hooked up with West Coast Customs. Yeah. GM donated a convertible 2011 Camaro. West Coast Customs did the audio 10 days worth of work for the paint job. It's camouflage representing all the different colors of the branches of service. You can really tell that they put their heart yeah. and soul into this yeah. work. Yeah. So then you took it to Meekum's auction. Yeah. And what did the car sell for? 333,000. I know there's a lot of other veterans out there that are facially disfigured or injured in any way in the war that yeah. don't know about Operation Men. So yeah. if we can spread the word and allow them to somehow hear about it and contact us, then we can help yeah. them too. 
Organizations like Operation Mend have given disabled soldiers like Joey the opportunity to enjoy the car hobby like they always have. It's all about passion, even in a Walmart parking lot. You know, we're here to capture kind of a phenomenon that's going on in the United States. So many car guys, we just keep growing. The hobby just keeps exploding. And now we are having an impact even on a mass merchandiser like Walmart. And uh, George Alderman is the category director for our category, automotive. I'm sure glad he is because he's a car guy. The neat thing about it is, you know, if, if uh, you want to purchase car wax or oil or oil filters, we've got it all. You, you never know that you have so many car uh, crazy people out there that wants to know, hey, can I come to Walmart and get that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. And it's a great place to be at. It's nice to know even the even the manager here at, the, at the, in Walmart yeah, well, is I'm, into cars. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, we are car crazy. You know, we want to be relevant to the automotive guy out there and really help them do what they want to do, take care of their cars. How to make your car look show car perfect is an issue for every car guy at a car show or in a major retailer. Any favorite cars you see out here? Yeah, there's so many, you know. That this car is great. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive or whether you're a guy or a gal. If you love cars, you're a car guy. Cool car guy. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank. Some of our younger viewers may not know what a T bucket is. Basic cut down version of an original Model T, Henry Ford Model T car. Yeah, like you're sitting in a bucket. <laughs> yeah. Presuming you go with this car? Everywhere. Do you? <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you go everywhere. Everywhere. So when you drive down the street now, do you feel like a teenager? Definitely. <laughs> what kind okay. of condition was she in when you found her? Oh, God. Rust bucket. Was she really? Yeah. Coming out here and seeing all these vehicles that yeah. they look great, it just makes me feel good. As you can tell, I'm excited. There are so many of us car guys now that retailers like Walmart are reaching out to us like never before. So I took a moment to thank them. There's car guys in the department, the automotive department, car guys that understand car guys. You really feel like you're in a specialty automotive show. They've made such a commitment. That's why we're here with Walmart. <laughs> and as we head back to the convention center, the sun may be setting on this year's SEMA show, but for all of the retailers going home, the season's just beginning. Well, that's a wrap on the greatest SEMA show ever and how much fun it is for us to be SEMA television here and get to interview the icons of the car hobby. Some of you say, how do you sit there and do that all day long every day? I got it easy. I didn't have to walk the 2 million square feet. I just sat here and let all these great friends of ours come here and talk to us and share their passion and their stories. It's been a blast, absolute blast. We've had so much fun bringing it to you. If you're in the automotive trade, you need to put this on your bucket list and be here next year.